This is how you can do this liquid glass animation in DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to be doing two variations of this. And if you want to do either, you're going to need to follow this entire tutorial. But if you don't want to waste your time, I've made drag and drop presets that you can get in the first link in the description or go to Rissle.shop. So first go up into the effects panel and search up fusion composition. Drag that into the timeline, then right click it and then press open in fusion page. Now, once you're here, all you should see is this media out here. So what you want to do is press shift space and add a background node and then connect that to the media out. So now you should see this black screen in the preview. Let's just go into the color here and then make this uh, off white. And now let's add our Apple style text. So press shift space and add a text plus node. Press enter and then hold shift and then slot it in right in between the background and the media out. So you should see this merge pops up. Just move this text up here and then in this text, Remember to change the color to black so you can actually see it. And then write uh, whatever you want. I'm just gonna write Ristal Liquid Gloss. So right now the font is not correct. So if you don't have it already, you're gonna need to download SF Pro. And now we can already see it looks kind of like Apple-y. And now what we wanna do is press Shift Space and add a rectangle node. This is gonna mask out our text so we can also have like a magnified look. So what you wanna do is connect this rectangle to the blue triangle of the text. And then you can see it's already getting masked out, which is good. And in this rectangle, increase the corner radius. So it looks kind of like a circle and then adjust the width and the height to whatever you want. After that, increase the soft edge just a little bit and then decrease the border width also just a little bit. So in the edges, you should see it's kind of fading out. So that will be our base. Now let's select this text and then press control C and then control shift V. This will create an instance of the text which basically just inherits all the properties from the original text. So if I just change literally anything here, it changes both of the texts. And these are really useful because they inherit properties, but also because you can de-instance some of the properties like the size. And now if we connect this to the pipeline, now you can see we have two texts that are different sizes, but if I change the text, it's exactly the same on both of them. Now what you want to do is do the same exact thing for the rectangle. So press control C on the rectangle and then press control shift V and you should see there's an instance here. Connect this instance of the rectangle to the instance of the text. Go up to this invert checkbox, right click it, and then press D instance. Now go into the original rectangle and then check the inverted box. Now you can see it's completely normal, except there's like a little soft edge here, which is completely normal. So now that we have that, we are going to want a displace node. So press shift space and get a displace node. Move that over here and then connect this instance of the rectangle to the green triangle of the displace node. This will put it to the foreground of the displace. Then take this instance text and then connect this to the yellow triangle of the displace. This will put it on the background and then disconnect this text from the merge and then connect this displace to the merge. So now if you go into this displace node, increase the refraction strength we can see on the edges here, it's kind of having a little bit of a distorted effect. So let's just make the refraction strength about like 0.7, I think. Go down to spread and make this just one. So now you can see it's getting a little bit more distorted, which is good. Now, if you just move this rectangle, you can see it's kind of offsetting kind of weirdly. We can see over here, it's completely disappeared for some reason. And if we put it back into the middle, it's kind of overlapping, which is weird. Let's fix that. Go into the displace node, right click center, and then press expression. Now type in here the name of this rectangle, which is instance underscore rectangle one. So let's just type that into the displace, instance underscore rectangle one, and then add a dot center, which basically inherits these properties since it's named center. And you can see over here, they are both the exact same property. So this is 0.552. Go into the displace and this is 0.552. It also completely fixed our problem. So it's working perfectly. We might want to uh, uh, adjust it a little bit, but it's looking really good so far. It's looking really good. So let's quickly fix this little effect. What we need to do is de-instance this soft edge and border width because this is inheriting from the first rectangle and we don't want that. So let's just quickly de-instance these go into the first rectangle and then double click on both of these to reset it. And now we can see it's completely fixed the overlap. And if we go into the instance again and decrease the border width, yeah, it, it works completely fine. 
and there we go. So now that we have this little magnified effect, we want to add some drop shadows to define the edges a little. So in your node graph, let's add a background node and a drop shadow node. Move that over here and then connect this drop shadow to this merge. And then after that, let's go into this instance of the rectangle, press control C and control shift V. It doesn't really matter which rectangle you instance to be honest, but just instance one of them and connect this instance of the rectangle to the blue triangle of the background. Let's also connect this rectangle to the blue triangle of the merge down here. You can see it already has a nice border to it, but it's not exactly perfect. So let's fix that. Let's de-instance these soft edge and border width. Let's reset it back to default just by double clicking both of them. And now go into the drop shadow and adjust it however you want. Also in this background node of the drop shadow, go into settings and make sure this apply mask inverted is checked on. Now we can see this is looking really, really good. So now let's add another drop shadow, but instead of an inner drop shadow, let's add an outer drop shadow for the back. So for that, we just, to be honest, just control C, control V, and then hold shift and connect this merge into the line and then connect the drop shadow back into it. And then with this rectangle, let's just control C, control shift V. Look, I don't know if I'm being too inefficient with my rectangles from using too many of them, but this is the way I spent like a couple hours figuring out. So after you got this next drop shadow section right here, on this instance of the rectangle, let's right click invert, de instance, and then check it. And now we can see it is looking really good. So now you've completed this liquid gloss effect, but let me show you, let me show you another variation of this effect. So in Apple Liquid Gloss, the distortion is usually outwards instead of inwards like this one is. So here's how to make it outwards. Let's go into the Displace node and make the refraction strength minus 2.5 and then press enter. And then the offset, let's make this minus 1.5. Now you can see it's looking very distorted. Let's decrease the spread to zero. Let's go into this rectangle before this displace node, increase the soft edge to about 500 and then increase the border width to about 600. With this rectangle, which is connected to this background and this merge, let's just take this rectangle here and connect it to this blue triangle of the displace. And now you can see it's masked it out. Let's just adjust these settings. So let's decrease the refraction strength a little bit. And there we go. And if you want to just have a simple drag and drop preset for this effect that you can add on to any clip and is completely customizable, go to Ristol.shop or press the first link in the description.